one, two, one, here we go. go. Hey faculty, I'm putting together a brief tutorial for you on how to put students into groups and to do group discussion in Blackboard. Now you might be saying, why do I need to do that? All my students are in there. They can participate in one big happy group, can't they? Well, they can, but uh, there's some good research in distance learning effectiveness that suggests that smaller groups or uh, optimally sized groups are more effective for student engagement. So think about it, if you're in there and you're one of 30, uh, it's easy to feel lost and it's easy to feel overwhelmed by this giant scroll of all these posts in there. But if you're in there of a group of 10, you feel much more like a part of the group, you're a bigger fish in a smaller pond, so to speak. And from the professor perspective, managing smaller groups is a little bit easier because then you can look at this group you're looking at 10 you can look at this group you're looking at 10 you may alternate uh, between weeks and this group I'm gonna this week I'm gonna work with this group I'm really gonna focus on this group this week I'm really gonna focus on this group so it gives you a way to manage a large class better so uh, that's sort of the pedagogical reasons besides behind why you would want to do this it's better for the students for student learning for student engagement and it's easier for you to manage the class. Okay, so uh, hang on, I'm gonna go through Blackboard and I'm gonna open up a class that I'm enrolled in and show you how to uh, actually set up groups and to put students into groups and then how to set up group discussion. So hang on, let's do this. Now the first thing you wanna do in Blackboard is go to this tab right here. This should be in your main screen, Users and Groups. Go to Groups. Now you'll notice there's nothing in there right now, so the first thing you want to do is you want to create groups. Now it gives you several options. You can do an option where you manually enroll the students in there. So let's just say I know which groups, what students I want to put in what group, and you actually do it yourself. Or you can just let the system do it. So you might have a system to do it. Maybe you want to do undergrad and grad. Maybe you want to do boys and girls. Maybe you want to do uh, different permutations of student groups. Then you would do manual enroll. If you're no, really not concerned about it, you just want the computer to figure it out and manually, uh, randomly enroll students in there so it's a nice even distribution. It will take the total number of students in the class and divide it by the number of groups and then put them in there. This option here lets the students put themselves in. Now this is a good choice, but obviously this is gonna take a little bit more work for you to, uh, uh, to set up, and you're gonna to have to give the students some instructions on this, and there has to be some wherewithal, right? But that's an option if you want. So for this demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do the random enroll and let the computer do it. So the first thing you wanna do is put in a name here. We'll just call it groups. You could put a description in here if you want. Now, it asks which tools you want to make available to the uh, students. Now, if you're not using any of these things in your class, then you probably don't want them available in groups either. So I'm going to uncheck blogs. Uh, discussion board is actually something I want in there. I'm going to uncheck email. These are not things that I ordinarily let. They can still email each other in the big area. Uh, we'll just keep that one there for now. Why not? I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do any of this stuff. Okay, now you can change any of this at any point, but for demonstration purposes, the only thing I'm going to put in here is the discussion board and the email. Uh, I don't want students to create forms. This is something I will do just like normal. And that's pretty much it. Now, the next question you have to determine is how many students per group and the number of groups. So if you want the computer to randomly assign your class between a set number of groups, you put this here and you determine how many groups you want. Now this class here I think already has uh, you know 90-ish students, so let's just say I want to do five groups. All right. Now if, you're, if your class has 30 students, my recommendation is that you make three groups. That's 10 students per group. That's a good discussion size. Um, if you have 24, maybe you want to do two groups of 12. 
uh, that's a good idea. The point is you don't want to have more than 10 or 12 students per discussion group. Okay, I'm kind of getting back to the pedagogy here. But think about the optimal size and what you think students realistically can interact. So again, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to say five groups and this will uh, it will automatically randomly assign students to the groups and leave this checked right here okay and this will just straight so if there's a uh, if there's a straggler if there's one over if it's an uneven number it'll put them in there and that's pretty much it and then you hit submit and you let the computer do its magic and look at this you've got five groups set up here it named them group one two three four five now apparently when I set it up here I should have just called it group because what it does, did was it named it groups one two that grammatically doesn't sound right all right so now we've got our groups and if you want to check and see who's in each group you can go into the edit group well you can go into a couple places you can go into open group and look at that it just manually I'm sorry, it randomly and automatically put 14 students. It took the total number of students in this class, divided it by five, and put the students in there. And it shows you the two tools that you selected right here. Okay? So that's pretty much how you put students into groups. Now the next question is, how do I make a discussion for each of the groups? Because that's ultimately what we're trying to do here, right? Well, what you want to do here is go into the group discussion board. Now, it automatically created one form for you here. My recommendation would be just to get rid of this. This is probably just going to confuse things for you. So just delete that automatic thing there. And now, you'll recognize this looks exactly like the discussion looks when there's no discussions in there, right? So let's just go back to the general discussions just to compare. Here's the general discussions. It's got a couple discussions in there, but it basically has the create form thing right here. And so using discussions in groups is the exact same as using it in the regular area. Okay, so we'll go back to group one here. We'll open the group. We see the group members and we see group discussion board. Now you might be saying, but hey Frank, I already created all my discussions here and now you're telling me I gotta do groups. Are you saying I've gotta recreate all my discussions for the entire class, all discussions each week for all those groups? That's a lot, do the math, seven times five, that's 35 posts. Well, fortunately, there's a very quick way to do that. The way you do that is by copying. So let's go back to our main discussion board. Here's the ones that you've already created. Click on the down arrow, say copy. Put in the name here. I'm going to call this group one, week one. Click form setting. Click the group and say submit. Now when you go back to groups and you go to group one, group discussion board, there it is. Look at that. Just like it was in the main discussion. So if you have three groups you will have to do that three times for each week. But you see it took me all of 20 seconds to do that. Now you might want to go into the settings, make sure everything looks the same way as you had. It should copy it over the same way. Notice all this is exactly the same here. And voila. So that's how you do that. Let's do it one more time because I want to show you something else here too. I want to show you something about the grade book. Now let's create group two here just for fun. I want to copy this and I want to copy this into group two. I'm going to call this group two. Week one, say submit. So now you go back to your groups, you go into group two, and you'll see the group discussion board. There's that question there. Here's that one that was created. Again, I would delete that. It just kind of makes things kind of confusing. You really don't need that. It's sort of the starter one it puts in there when you created the discussion board. Now, the only other thing you need to know about creating discussion in groups is the grade book is going to look a little bit different now. So let's go back to the full grade center. Now you'll notice here that there's creates two group one, two different discussion columns, right? 
This is group one, week one. This is group two, week one. Now you'll notice not everybody it will allow you to it won't it will not allow you to grade everybody. It'll only allow you to grade the students that are in that group. So right here you can grade Judith in group one, but you can't grade Judith in group two because she's not in group two. So these gray bar here represent the fact that this student these students are not in that particular group. Okay, so when you're doing your grading, you'll only have the number of students in group in that group in each column. All right, so that is basically it. One more tip here. Once you've transferred the discussions over to the groups, you should make the general group discussion unavailable. If you don't do that, the students then may actually end up doing the discussion in both places or they're going to be confused. So make sure you do this before you open up the thread, otherwise you're going to have students doing it in the discussion area and not in the group area or vice versa and then it will be confusing. So make sure you disable the general group area and that's pretty simple to do. You just say edit and down here it will give you the option to make it available no and it's still there in your class you can see it but the students can't see it so this way in the future let's just say you use the same class over again in the future and you're not using groups because it's a smaller enrollment it's right here all you have to do is make it available so this can serve as sort of your master discussion question area but they're really doing it down in the groups so i hope this helps let me know if you have any questions god bless you guys have a great class